Right, we're going to get into God's Word, but let's pray over this Word. Father, we want to honor you this morning. Yes, Lord. Father God, by, by just receiving your Word this morning and, and living it out, Father God, help us to, uh, well, to know you more through this Word, God, to look at things maybe through that divine perspective. Give us that divine perspective, Lord God, and to not just hearing it, not just reading it, not just seeing it, Lord God, but may it really become who we are, Lord God, because your word tells us who we are, tells us who you are, Lord. So we just want to ask that we can live that way. We can hear this word this morning and be doers of this word this morning, Father God, for your glory to be revealed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we've been going through a, a series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit for the last few weeks, and it was good to have uh, our, our brother Joseph Tambora uh, come in last week, and really, um, he's a, a man, he's on fire for God, he's, uh, we mentioned last week, he's an evangelist, he goes around throughout the country and, and beyond, uh, spreading God's word, it was great to have him come in and just see Amen. what God is doing, Amen. 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 Well, we're going to continue in our, in our series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've probably got three weeks left on this. And we know these gifts are, are um, well, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 talks about the gifts that we're talking about. And today, today what I want to talk to you about is a more excellent way. A more excellent way. If you go to the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 27 it says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. So we are the body of Christ. Even Amen. though we're individuals, we are put together, we are the body of Christ. Amen. Now if, you, if you go down to verse 29 through 31, it says, Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? <coughs> Do all interpret? Verse 31. But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet, I show you a more excellent way. So the more excellent way of that verse 31, it is the way of love. Amen. Now, I told you 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14 really talks about the Holy Spirit. Um, chapter 13 teaches us the supremacy of love. Amen. It's up here. First, uh, First Corinthians chapter 13 is very popular at weddings, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, well, because they talk about love. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, today I want to look at, I want to look at uh, this chapter in relation to the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, it's significantly placed between chapters 12, which lists, lists the gifts of the Spirit, and chapter 14, which talks about how we use them. So right in the middle is this love chapter. Mm. So you cannot have a discussion on the Holy Spirit without discussing love. Mm. Love is the necessary motive behind every action that we do. Now I know at weddings we, we hear this, or, or I, I remember when my, my daughter was dating this kid. He's not there anymore. <laughs> but I sat down and I read out that. I said, this is what love is to these kids. I guess he didn't like it. <laughs> well, <laughs> he didn't live it, that's for sure. Yeah. But today I want to talk about what this chapter is actually talking about. It is talking about love. But God, he has emphasized the priority of love even over those spiritual gifts. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 3. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Mm -hmm. Amen. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, I, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. The more excellent way that uh, Paul points to is this <coughs> function of love, the love of Christ as, as our chief motive for doing anything. Amen. What Paul is saying to the Corinthians here is, you know, I can be a gifted speaker. 
I can impress you with my eloquence, or, or I could speak in tongues and uh, a heavenly language, which would really impress you Corinthians, because that's how you gauge a spiritual maturity. But without the love of Christ, without the, the, the motive of a genuine love and service to others, my eloquence is worthless. If my heart lacks love, then my mouth is just making noise. So, love. <coughs> the Greek word for love in this passage is agape. And in its highest sense, it's a divine love, a selfless love, a sacrificial love. Love without expectation of return. Now this passage also cites several of the spiritual gifts listed in, in chapter 12, doesn't it? Tongues, prophecy, knowledge, faith as well as good works. Provides excellent examples, angelic as well as human tongues. Comprehensive knowledge extending to all mysteries, it says. Complete faith, even to move mountains. Giving away all possessions. And then the cruelest of martyrs being burned. Now even if one person manifested all these gifts and all these works to the highest degree, without love, Nothing. That's right. And the deeds that he does doesn't benefit him at all. Now I know in our day, multitudes would, uh, thousands of people would flock to someone who, who had all these gifts and works. But the scripture warns us that in themselves, none of these things are a rating for spirituality or truth. Mm -hmm. In short, the only acceptable motive for operating in the spiritual gifts is <coughs> Now, we should earnestly desire spiritual gifts. We must desire them for the right purpose. Mm -hmm. Not to exalt ourselves or, 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 or to say, look what I can, but to bless others. That's what these gifts are for. Mm -hmm. I think maybe one reason that Christians don't see more of these gifts being manifested is, well, maybe because they desire them Selfishly. Mm -hmm. But see, when we exercise a spiritual gift, we've got to ask ourselves, well, I mean, am I speaking or acting in love? Mm -hmm. Is my true motive love for God, mm -hmm. for His church, for the lost, or do I seek to boost my own ego? Mm -hmm. Human motives can be a, a mixture of the selfish and the noble. We humans have a great ability to justify ourselves and to deceive ourselves. The prophet Jeremiah talked about this in chapter 17, verse 9. He says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Wow. I don't want to, I don't want to think my heart is like that. Mm -mm. But none of us can trust his own heart. That's right. So what do we do? We've got to periodically examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've got to ask the Lord to, to reveal impurities in our lives. We've got to ask Him to purge out improper motives and desires. David, the psalmist, he displayed this, this attitude in prayer in Psalm 19. Verses 12 through 14 says, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Verse 13, Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Verse 14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It would behoove us to pray that to, on a you know, regular basis. Lord, if there's anything within me that's just desiring my own... Uh, Whatever, my, my, to exalt myself, to get rid of that, Lord. I want less of me. I want more of you. I want to be able to bless people with your love. I don't want to be held up. Now, we should desire the spiritual gifts. Mm. But we must recognize that it is dangerous to do that without love. Amen. That's right. They're supernatural. And often spectacular. Mm -hmm. right? If you're praying on somebody, you're laying on hands on somebody, and they get healed, that's pretty spectacular, right? Mm -hmm. 
We can easily seek them for personal attention or gain. Look what I did. No, you didn't do it. God did it. We shouldn't do that. And if we're doing that, we're ignoring what is best for others. Mm. We don't want to do that. We've got to continuously remind ourselves that without love, these gifts are, well, they're meaningless. Yes. Right. So I want to talk about the characteristics of this. Remember, this is all in relation to the spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. We take, we tend to take this chapter and and uh, use it as our love for, for one another, and we can. It is talking about that love, but this love, in 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 a response to the spiritual gifts. Let's look at the character of this love in Corinthians <coughs> 13 verses 4 through 7 says, "Love suffers long and is kind." Think about these spiritual gifts. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. These verses describe the essence of love. The kind of love that is necessary in the use of spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Patient, kind, mm -hmm. not envious, not boasting, not proud, not rude, not self-seeking, not easily angered, keeps no record of wrong, does not delight in evil, rejoices in the truth, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Now clearly, <clears throat> as verses 1 through 3 reveals, it is possible for someone to exercise spiritual gifts without love, which would be a misuse of these gifts. Right. But these characteristics of love help us to learn how to use these gifts <laughs> properly, and they help us to identify improper use. Mm -hmm. For instance, God is never going to grant spiritual gifts for, for a harsh, rude, or, or, or a hot-tempered rebuke. No. He's not going to give you a, a gift to humiliate someone, to help someone get revenge, or, or to promote envy or strife. He's not going to say, Lord, I really need a word of wisdom right now so I can reveal all the sins of this guy and then expose him to everybody. <laughs> the proper use of spiritual gifts will always promote truth. The truth of his word, the protection of souls, <laughs> trust in God, hope for the future, and the perseverance of faith. Mm. See, if we're motivated by love, we will not misuse these spiritual gifts. We'll operate in them as God wills, not exalting ourselves. So our priority has to be what? To love God, yeah. to love the truth, and to love others. That's how we get motivated in these gifts. So we talked about that supremacy of, of love, right? If I have all these gifts, but I don't have love, well then I'm nothing. We talked about the characteristics of love, being patient, kind, envy, not envious, not boastful, not proud, not rude, not self-seeking, not easily angered, keeps no record of wrong, does not delight in evil, rejoices in the truth, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Remember this love that we're talking about is the love, uh, uh, the love is it's our motivation for the use of these gifts in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, the supremacy of love the characteristics of love. I want to talk about something else now. The permanency of love. Love is always going to be. Love is never going to end. That's, that's awesome to say. <laughs> it's awesome to hear. It's awesome to know. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 13. Love never fails. Can we just repeat those three words? Love, love never, never fails. fails. That's very comforting right there. Amen. Love never fails, but whether there is prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Amen. But when that which is perfect has come, meaning Jesus, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then, when he comes, face to face. Now I know in part. But then, when he comes, I shall know just as I also am known. 
verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. We should value love over spiritual gifts because only love is eternal. Amen. Only love is the essence of the kingdom of God. And in these verses, the, uh, the permanence of love demonstrates its superiority over all these gifts. Church, I want to tell you, these gifts are for today. They are. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. They are for today. Faith, healing, working of miracles. They are for today. Speaking in tongues, interpretation of prophecy. That is for today. We should, be, we should be working in them. We should be moving in them. But when that which is perfect has come, when Christ comes and establishes his kingdom, there will be no longer, no longer need for spiritual gifts. Mm. Because we're going to attain full maturity and perfection in him. Amen. I want you to get this. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says, Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us what we will be what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him. For we will see him as he really is. We will have perfect communion with God. Thank you, Jesus. There will be no need for tongues or prophecy. No. We're going to have perfect communion with God. Because we're going to be made just like him, it says. Yes. We're going to have full knowledge. There will be no need for partial knowledge or, or word knowledge. Now, in this life, what do we do? We walk by faith, not by sight, right? Amen. That's in 2 Corinthians. I don't have it up here. But <laughs> we are saved in hope. We cannot actually see our ultimate salvation yet. So we're walking by sight. I mean, we're walking by faith, not by sight. Right? We're saved in this hope. We don't know the full extent of our salvation yet. Mm -mm. Romans chapter 8 says this in verses 24 and 25. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. So when he comes and our salvation, our full salvation is revealed, it's not hope anymore. For why does one still hope in what he sees? Says Verse 25. But we hope for what we do not see. We eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So church, one day we're going to see things clearly. Amen. Yes. Remember uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, back in verse 12, it said, Now we see in a mirror dimly. That's what we see now. But then, when he comes, we're going to see face to face. Amen. Now, I know in part. But then, I shall know, just as also I am known. When the Lord returns for us, we're no longer going to need faith or hope. For our journey <coughs> will be over. And we're going to inherit the promises of God. Mm. But guess what? Love? Love will still be there. Love unites us with God. And love unites us with one another. Mm. But for today, church, for right now, the word of wisdom, mm. the word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, these gifts of the Holy Spirit are for the church today. Amen. So love is the foundation. The central motivation behind every spiritual gift. So in order for these gifts to be effective and fruitful, they must be done in love. Right. So, that means we should never seek God's power to flow through us without first Seeking God's love reflected in us. Amen. We can't just walk around and say, well, I just want that power of God. People tried that. When they saw the disciples working and, and moving in the Spirit, they wanted that. Mm. But it's that love, that foundation, that motivation for others. It's others seeking. It's not self-seeking. Love. You know, the nature of divine love is found in the cross. 1 John chapter 4 says in verses 10 through 11, this is love. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen. Verse 11, dear friends, 
Since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. We can love them through these spiritual gifts. We can love them. We can heal them. We can we can prophesy to them. We can we can we can just pour out His love. It's got to be a foundation of love, and it's so much higher than everything else. Amen. You know our mission statement here at Grace Community Church is to help others grow in Christ, to share the message of Christ, and to love others as He loves us. Amen. Helping others to grow in Christ. In Acts chapter 20, it says in verse 28, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. The Holy Spirit has made you overseers. That means we're to be Holy Spirit led. Mm-hmm. Be shepherds of the church. It says, raise up those mature Christians. It says in the, in the last part, it says, he bought with his own blood. What does that mean? All glory goes to God. Amen. Amen. It's His. The middle part of our mission statement is sharing the message of Christ. In Matthew chapter 28, we know this. Verses 19 and 20. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Go and make disciples. That's evangelism. Everybody's afraid of that word. Just go and make, make disciples. The baptizing that I talked about. Your your son-in-law got baptized. He's now identified. He's identified with it. it a fel- he's part of the fellowship now. He made a public statement, a public proclamation of what what has happened on the inside of him. He accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And now teach them all things. It says discipleship. And finally, the last part of our mission statement is love others as He loves us. Kind of our logo. It's on all of our stuff that we, our T-shirts. It's on our, our cards that we pass out. But John chapter 15 says this in 9 through 12. It says, as the, just as Jesus talking goes, He says, as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Now abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy, my joy, may remain in you. And that your joy may be full. Verse 12. This is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. So he says, as the Father has loved me, I have loved you. That's the example of love. We have an example of love. He says, abide in my love. I talk about this a lot. Where we have unity in Christ. That perfect bond of peace. That love. And then finally, love one another as I have loved you. That is a that's a grace-motivated love. We didn't deserve his love. Not even close. So what does that kind of love look like? In a practical application of the spiritual gifts. How can this love that is so big, it is so e- it's eternal, it lasts forever, it never fails, what does that kind of love look like when you apply it to the spiritual gift like it's supposed to be? Well, when we're functioning in spiritual gifts, we must be you got to be patient. you got to be kind. You can't demand our own timetable. Well, I prayed for that healing. It didn't happen like that. Keep praying. You can't be dissatisfied with the gift or the call that God has given but, and, be, and being envious of what he has given to others. You can't do that. And at the same time, we must not boast about some spiritual gift that we have and think, well, ours is better than the next person. Well, I got the gift of healing. That, that guy just talked in tongues. No, that's not how we. That's not how it's supposed to be. Mm-mm. We're not going to be arrogant. We're not going to be rude. This love, <laughs> this perfect love that never fails. We're not going to be arrogant about it. We're not going to be. It's not even about us. <laughs> Using our gifts as an excuse to, to demean others or, or to be self-centered. No. This is what this kind of love is teaching us in re, in response to these gifts. See, whatever that we have to offer, whatever gift it is that we have to offer, and we can pray, we earnestly desire all of these spiritual gifts. Whatever we have to offer, whether it is a word of prophecy or or an act of service, whatever it is, we're not going to push it on others. But what we're going to do is we're going to humbly, gently offer it to them. That's what love does. 
We shouldn't insist in having things our own way. Well, you know, I think I have the gift of prophecy, so I think it should work like this. And, and you better receive it like this. No, we can't have things our own way. Love is outward facing, right? It's others minded. So when we're motivated by love, we're going to notice opportunities to encourage the faith in others. Amen. How about working in these spiritual gifts with the motivation of love to encourage faith in someone that doesn't have it or someone that doesn't know the Lord yet? I think that's that's pretty powerful. I, we can we can uh, prophesy, we can speak in tongues, but how about if I can motivate someone's faith for doing that because of the love that the Lord is showing? You know, not insisting on having our own way means that we won't withhold our gift either because uh, we're, uh, uh, we're a little skeptical of who this person is. Well, you know what? I know I've worked this. I know he's given me this gift of a uh, 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 word of wisdom and I have something for this. But that, have you seen the way this guy has been living? I can't, I can't share that gift with him. He's not worthy. No, that's not how we move through love, is it? No. Christ-like love. break down our own pride. Mm -hmm. Christ-like love will fear no man. It will empower us to serve others with our gift. That love. Love. Working in this love means we're not going to get irritable or resentful. And we can at times. Can't we? Can we get irritable? Yeah. yeah. We can be resentful. <clears throat> Irritation comes when we think less of others, though. Mm. Why won't they just do what I'm telling them to do? <laughs> I know what's best. <laughs> Resentment comes when we believe that others think less of us. Well, I, I, I can't do what they're doing. I don't. I know. Man, we are resentful because we're we think we're less than others. Here's the thing, church. <laughs> Love reminds us it's not even about us, right? So well, why be resentful? Why be irritable? It's about honoring Christ and serving others. We focus on that through love. We're not going to be irritable. Right? We're not going to resent others. When we're moving in these spiritual gifts, motivated by love, we're not going to rejoice at wrongdoings. Oh, that person, he hasn't been really walking with the Lord lately. Look what happened. Yeah! Get him, God. Right? No. That's not what we do. Instead, we rejoice in the truth. Say, brother, I see what you're doing. Come on, there's a there's a, a, a more excellent way here. Walking in his love, uh, using these gifts in his love, it means that we're going to value what God values. We're going to celebrate what he celebrates. His victories. We're going to seek to walk in the truth and rejoice with the truth of the gospel. So when we're motivated by love, we're motivated by and, and, and function in, in a selfless, sacrificial love of Christ, well then the gifts of the Spirit will be fruitful. We're going to see them happening. Our discipleship will be more effective. Our relationships will deepen. Our unity will be stronger. Our church will be more healthy. God will use us to reach those who are hurting Walking in this love and just being open to what he has for us. But dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen. 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 We're going to worship now. I want you to think about this chapter 13 that lists all these, uh, uh, the supremacy of Christ, <coughs> the, uh, of love, the the uh, permanency of, of, of love. I want you to just think about these and, and put them, <laughs> uh, just put them together with these spiritual gifts. So what, I just want you to know that that's, that is powerful. That love that never fails, it's not going to fail. <laughs> I mean, that's what it says. Love never fails. It will not fail. When we seek these spiritual gifts, 
will we walk motivated in love? Amen?